Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at all of the Ryzen 7000 series powered handhelds that are on the market right now. And uh, by the end, I'm going to show you my favorite. I'm going to tell you exactly why. But each one of these devices does have its own strengths and weaknesses. And of course, it's really going to come down to personal preference, which one you prefer. These are just the nine that have been released so far in 2023. And these are the Zen 4 8 core 16 thread variant. So we've got that 7840U. One of these does have a little bit of a different variant from that, but uh, it's basically the same exact chip. And keep in mind, all of them do have those RDNA 3 graphics. It's the 780M, 12 CEUs, up to 2700 megahertz. Okay, so first on the list, we've got the 2023 GPD WinMax 2. I personally really like this little laptop slash handheld hybrid. Really nice built-in keyboard, multi-touch trackpad, and we've got a 10.1 inch IPS display. Some people don't exactly call it a handheld, but you know, I still consider it that way, given that we do have these built-in controls. These will actually slide into the back of the unit so you won't lose them. Dual analog sticks, a Vita D-pad, which feels really great. And if we take a look around back, you can see that we've got these two mappable buttons here. We've also got our shoulder buttons and analog triggers. But one of the best things about this 2023 model is they've actually added an Oculink port, which allows you to connect to an Oculink eGPU like the GPD G1. It does allow for better performance than Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4, but we also have USB 4 here. So if you are using an older Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 dock, you can use it with the WinMap. Max 2. And it's got a pretty big 67 watt hour battery. So with the APU running at 15 watts, you can get around 154 minutes of runtime out of this thing. And when it comes to overall performance, like I mentioned, a lot of these devices are going to be really close at the same wattage. But with this new GPD Win 2, this is actually the highest score I've ever gotten in Time Spy with the 7840U so far. In fact, the highest score I've ever gotten on an iGPU, coming in at 3,418. And we were at 35 watts there. Next up, we've got the AOK Zoe A1 Pro. AOK Zoe is kind of a sister company to One Netbook, the people who make the One X player. As you can see, it's a larger handheld coming in with an 8 inch display at 1920 by 1200. All of the buttons, analog sticks, and especially triggers feel great. Love the throw on these triggers, but the one big letdown with this handheld is the D pad. I really wish they would have swapped this out for a better D-pad. Now, obviously, we've got that 7840U, but the RAM here is running at 6400 megatransfers per second, so it's not the fastest out there with the 7000 series handhelds. Got a kickstand around back, plenty of cooling. They recommend to run this at 28 watts, but I've taken it up to 35 without an issue. Also has USB 4 and a 65 watt hour battery, so at 15 watts, you can expect around 148 minutes of runtime. Next up, we've got the new Aya Neo Air 1S. Definitely the smallest 7840U handheld on the market. It's got a 5.5 inch AMOLED display, which is absolutely beautiful. In my opinion, it is the best looking display in a handheld right now, but I do wish they would have taken something like this up to seven inches just to make it a bit bigger. Hall-based triggers, hall-based analog sticks, plus we've got fingerprint login. I do like the design here. It's very pocketable. Definitely the smallest one on the market. Also has USB 4. But the letdown with this is just going to be battery life. Given how small this is, they did need to opt for a smaller battery to fit in here. It's a 38 watt hour battery with the TDP set on this APU at 15 watts. You can get around 91 minutes of runtime out of this handheld. But if you're looking for a super portable 7840U powered handheld, then this is definitely one to take a look at. As we know, Aya Neo has been pumping out these 7840U powered handhelds. So here we have the Geek 1S. This is one that I really do enjoy using. We've got a 7 inch 800p IPS on this one, but remember they also make the Geek 1S with a 1200p display. I do think that Aya Neo has the best D-pad on the market out of anything I've ever tested, even controllers. It does have hall based analog sticks and triggers here. It also has a 50.25 watt hour battery. So with that APU set at 15 watts, you can expect around 115 minutes of runtime. Now with the unit I have here, the RAM was actually set at 6400 megahertz. Over on their website, they say that's compatibility mode. We can get this to run at 7500, but I've only tested it at 64 right now. This is definitely one of my favorites right now. It's the GPD Win 4 Pro or the 2023 model with that 7840U. One of the big reasons I love it so much is because we've got this slide up screen here with a QWERTY keyboard and the fact that, you know, they took a lot of cues from the PSP and the PS Vita. In fact, we've got a PS Vita D-pad here and buttons. 
Definitely a bit of a thick boy, but uh, overall, it's still very, very portable. RAM is running at 7500, and out of the box, we can go up to 35 watts on the TDP. And with the new Pro model, or the 2023 model, we've also got that Oculink port for connecting an eGPU. We've also got USB 4, just like most of these devices. 7-inch slide-up IPS display, it's also got fingerprint login, and the battery on this is coming in at 45.62 watt hours. And at 15 watts, you can get around 105 minutes of runtime. The One X Fly is one of the newest ones I've received, and the Indiegogo will be launching soon. As you can see, we've got some RGB around those analog sticks, and these customizable nameplates here with some RGB behind it. It's got a 7-inch 1080p 120Hz display, an upgraded D-pad from the old One X players. This one is much better here. Hall-based analog sticks, hall-based triggers. Obviously, we've got the black version here, but they're also offering this in white. With the black, we get that kind of rubberized back, which feels really good. One full-size USB 3.2 port, two USB 4 ports. It will support 40 gig eGPUs. RAM speed is 7500. And even though this one's coming in a lot smaller than most of the other 7-inch handhelds on the market, we've got a 48 watt hour battery allowing us to get around 110 minutes of gameplay at 15 watts. Like I mentioned, Ioneo has definitely been pumping out these 7000 series handhelds, and here we have the Ioneo 2S. One of my favorite things about this handheld is actually the display. You can see we've got a bezel-less 7-inch display. It's a class-leading IPS at 1080p, 60Hz. It looks absolutely amazing. Hall-based analog sticks, and we've got that awesome D-pad from Ioneo. Fingerprint login, USB 4, USB 3, micro SD card reader, really great cooling system here. You can take this up to 28 watts. It does run really well at 28 watts. And it's one of the most comfortable handhelds to kind of hold on to for long periods of time. The way this is designed, it definitely fits right in the palms very, very well. You can reach everything easily. And with the addition of ISpace 2, their new software center, it's actually really easy to kind of reprogram all the buttons here. We can adjust the TDP and just get this thing acting exactly how you want it to. This one's turned out to be an absolute beast. It's the One X Player 2 Pro, but it's the Evangelion version. Huge fan of the series and the movies. This one is the best looking handheld to date, in my opinion. My favorite color is purple, and this thing does look really good. But, as you can see, it is a hoss. It's a huge handheld, coming in with an 8.4 inch display. It's pretty heavy because it does have the biggest battery we've seen so far, that at least what we can buy on the market right now. It's got a kickstand around back, USB 4. The RAM in this is running at 7500 megahertz, and we've got these detachable controllers because it is the new One X Player 2. It's just the Pro version with that Ryzen 7 7840U. You can also buy the wireless attachment for these controllers, kind of slide them together and use this in desktop mode. And on average at 15 watts, you can get around 151 minutes of gameplay out of this device. The cooling system in here is great up to 35 watts, and at 35 watts, it's an absolutely amazing performer. And of course, I'm sure everybody saw this coming, but uh, the last one on the list here is the ASUS ROG Ally. Now I completely understand that they're calling the chip in here the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, but it's basically the same exact thing as the 7840U. They've just got the AI accelerator disabled in the Z1. And this is my favorite Ryzen 7000 series powered handheld right now. And it really comes down to the software that ASUS has provided and BIOS updates. So when this initially launched to reviewers, there were a few issues here and there. And it was kind of a prototype that a lot of us got our hands on. But with all of these new BIOS updates, it's a totally different handheld. Overall, performance here is great at higher TDPs, lower TDPs, we can go to desktop mode. The 7 inch IPS display that they chose here looks great. It's 120 hertz, and that's awesome for indie games running at 120 on a handheld. I mean, it's pretty amazing what this thing can do. It also has a 45 watt hour battery, same as the Steam Deck. Now there is a few things I would love to see on kind of the next revision. One of the main things would be swapping this D-pad out. It's definitely not horrible, and it does work a lot better than a lot of the other dish-style D-pads that we've seen on these handhelds, but it would have been nice to have a traditional D-pad on this. And the last thing I would love to see is USB 4. Now with this, we only get one USB-C port and that XG port for an external GPU, but those cost an arm and a leg, and I've already got some Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 docks laying around that would work over USB 4. Unfortunately, they did nerf it here to kind of sell more of those XG docks. I understand why they did it, but it would have been really nice if they just used USB 4 right off the bat.
So yeah, at the time of making this video, these are the nine Ryzen 7000 series handhelds on the market, and like I mentioned at the beginning, performance between all of these at the same TDP is going to be relatively the same. Now, some of them with the faster RAM might perform a bit better. You can get up to around 8 to 12 FPS gain by having that 7500 versus 6800 or even 6400. And some of these devices do use different power profiles. So at lower TDPs, the ROG Ally has been outperforming a lot of the stuff on the market with the newest BIOS updates that ASUS has provided. But all of these could kind of perform exactly the same with the correct tuning. It's really going to come down to the form factor, feel, battery life, screen size, Everybody's going to have their own opinion on all of these handhelds, and in the end, it's really up to you to decide which one you want, or if you're just going to wait it out for Ryzen 8000 or 9000, whatever their next one's going to be, you could definitely do that also. But before I wrap this up, I did want to give you some average battery life out of all of these devices here. Now, my test consists of 15 watt TDP, and throughout my test, all of these averaged anywhere from 23 to 26 watts total power draw. That's everything included. Screen, speakers, RGB. So I did some calculations at 26 watts, and as you can see, that iNeo 1S, 91 minutes, ROG Ally 103, Win 4 Pro 105, 1X Fly 110 minutes, the iNeo 2S and Geek 1S have the same capacity, so we're right there at around 115 minutes, the AOK Zoe A1 Pro with that larger battery, 148 minutes, the 1X Player 2 Pro 151, and the WinMax 2 Pro averages around 154 minutes. Now that's at a 15 watt TDP. Lower will net you more, higher's gonna net you less. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. If you could choose between any of these handhelds, which one would it be and why? Also, if you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.